You need objects to create objects. You have a whole hierarchy of objects to produce some objects. And you'll actually find this is the case for pretty much nearly every object you come in contact with every day. One of the main ones would be your car. Now, your car is an object, but it's a hierarchy of objects. You needed many, many objects to make your car. A car wouldn't just be a car. It needs an engine. It needs wheels. It also needs panels, and it also needs a windscreen, if you want to be comfortable at least, and also all of the other windows, and also it needs the interior, it needs the upholstery, and the engine itself, well, that's even more. You've got the head gasket, you've got pistons, you've got the water coolant system, you've got pipes, you've got this and that, and the ECU, and all the rest of it. You've got literally millions of objects that make up when combined together, encapsulated, meaning put together, to make an object. There is a hierarchy. So objects can encapsulate, meaning store inside of themselves, like your car has inside of itself an engine, and inside of the engine it has many of the other components, all of the other little objects. So, that is how we have encapsulation. Objects can encapsulate other objects. And likewise with your computer. Your computer is a type of object, but it encapsulates, meaning groups together all kinds of other objects. The keyboard, the trackpad, the screen, and the screen even has a tube in it, which is the backlight. You also have the camera, you have the motherboard, and the motherboard encapsulates even more. So for example, the SPU, CPU, and GPU, and I could keep going on forever and a day about all the different little objects. But hopefully now you can understand that to really map out the real world, we need to be able to, in our programs, have objects that encapsulate other objects. Especially when it comes to, let's say, engineering or anything like that. You have, let's say, objects inside of objects inside of objects and so on and so forth. So this is why it's really important to understand that programming languages can do this as well. You can have a main computer object. This object is going to encapsulate all the other objects. And then I can have another object, which is going to be the screen, and another object, which is going to be the keyboard, and another object, which is going to be the trackpad, and so forth. And each one of those objects can have its own nouns and adjectives, and also it can have verbs as well. So the screen will be turn on, turn off, turn the brightness up, turn the brightness down. The keyboard it has its own properties, the color, style, maybe the language region. And then also you have the ability to type on the keyboard and do certain actions on the keyboard type object. And then you also have the trackpad. What does the trackpad consist of? Size, color, and also what you can do is maybe touch gestures. So there's our verbs such as zoom in, zoom out with the two fingers and three finger scroll and all the rest of the stuff that comes with your touch enabled trackpads. And of course, clicking is involved in that as well. So what you have to remember is each one of those objects has properties and it also has methods specifically to it. And when we have all of these objects, when you group them together, you have a hierarchy of objects. And by having this, when you encapsulate all of those objects together, you end up with an object type, such as a computer or a car. A car wouldn't be a car just in and of itself. It consists of many other objects. So that's how we can create objects by other objects. And then you have a computer type object or a Hoover type object or a car type object. Whatever it is, it consists of many, many objects. And that's what an object hierarchy is. An object hierarchy is where objects encapsulate other objects, encapsulate other objects, and encapsulate other objects. And it just keeps going in that fashion until everything is documented and mapped out. So if I was building a program for a mechanic, I'd need to make sure that I not only provided some basic car details, but I also need to provide him with the engine specs and then inside of the engine I need to provide him with certain specifications on let's say the crankshaft, let's say the pistons and all the rest of it, the timing belt, 
whatever it is. And just like I'm talking to you right now in the English language and I'm talking about encapsulation and objects inside of objects inside of objects, guess what? Your programming languages, the thing designed for human beings, can do exactly the same thing, just in a different way.